some words then from the Psalms. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And later on, we hear Jesus say, blessed are the peacemakers, or they will be called children of God. Friends, we gather here this morning to worship God, who is good and just and true. He created and sustains the world and loves us, though we have failed him. We remember all who have given their lives in the struggle for justice and peace. All who suffer in war and conflict. And all those who live in terror. We ask for God's guidance and blessing that we may do his will, and that all peoples may acknowledge his kingship and reign. It is a delight to be with you this morning, friends. On behalf of those of us from Chapel URC, may I wish you a very good morning. Um, it's strange to think that it's about a month and a half since we last led a service with you. Um, I don't know where the time has gone. Things have changed quite dramatically in our world, haven't they, over recent weeks? yet it's a delight that we're able to meet together via Zoom. I am joined this morning from chapel by Brian, Tony and Valerie, all three of whom you've met before, um, and it's a real pleasure to have them here. Um, and the Reverend Sharon Quilter will no doubt introduce herself later on. I'm grateful for all of these people coming, particularly because it means we can uh, have a service that represents both of our churches. We're going to begin then with a prayer. So I invite you all, let us pray. Most gracious God, Father of all mercies, we offer our thanks for the bounty of your providence and the renewing liberty of your grace. We rejoice that we inherit holy things and we give thanks for the freedom and peace in which we live especially on this day, we give thanks for the remembrance we are privileged to make of those companions of our way whose lives were given in a time of war. But dear Lord, as we come to worship you, we remember those times where we have worked for war and not for peace. For those times we have not stood up for those in need times we focus so much on ourselves that we have neglected to focus on others. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We remember also those times we have forgotten that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Those times we have not offered sympathy. And those times we have failed to do for others what we would have them do for us. Gracious God, have mercy upon us. For those times we have trusted in strength, weapons, conflict or violence. For those times we have evaded our duties. And those times we have not acted in a Christian way. Gracious God, have mercy upon us. Cleanse and transform our hearts, loving God so that we may trust in those things that make for peace. May we in our lives help to establish the kingdom which shall have no end, where peace, justice, righteousness and love may prevail. May we be numbered among the peacemakers, those who are rightly called children of God. Amen. Friends, let us be comforted and gladdened as we hear the good news of the gospel. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. To all those who repent and believe, be assured that God forgives your sins through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I expect your best singing voices now as we sing our first hymn. Uh, the words will appear on the screen, but they're also on the hymn sheets that most of you will have in front of you. So we sing together. 
our God, our help in ages past. And I advise that you're careful about the first word because in the free churches, we tend to sing our God, our help, because that's how Isaac Watts initially wrote it. But I think some churches have, oh God. But we sing whatever it is we know as we sing this very special paraphrase of Psalm number 90. And so, friends, let us now remember before God those who have died for their country in conflict, war or terror. Those whom we knew, whose memories we treasure. And all those who have lived and died in the service of humanity. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age will not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Brian is now going to read to us from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the second chapter beginning at the second verse. passage is entitled the future house of God in the days to come the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills all the nations shall stream to it many people shall come and say let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come let us walk in the light of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the Reverend Sharon Quilter is going to read our gospel lesson for us. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. And it is Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12, the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. We now come to our second hymn, ladies and gentlemen, which is Eternal Father, Strong to Save. Uh, wonderful uh, remembrance tied hymn, particularly remembering those in peril on the sea. And it's this hymn we sing now.
this is the season of Remembrance Tide. And indeed, there are many important things that happen in this season. Firstly, on November the 1st, many churches mark or have marked All Saints Day. This is a time where the church can remember those who through their lives and example have led us along the Christian path. This evening, November 5th, we mark Guy Fawkes' night. We remember Guy Fawkes' attempt to destroy the Houses of Parliament. Um, a friend of mine once described that as the last time that somebody had entered politics uh, with honest intent, but we won't, um, we won't go there. On November the 8th, the nation observes the six month anniversary of my birthday, exactly six months to and from the date of my birth. But it's also on November the 8th, this year a Sunday, and indeed on November the 11th, that our nation falls silent as we have today. Because it's on that day that we give thanks for those brave men and women who down through the centuries have given their lives in the pursuit of peace and harmony. Now I'll admit I often find Remembrance Sunday a very difficult day. Aside from the raw emotion of the day, which often leads me to tears, I find it very difficult to preach a sermon that treads that fine line between giving thanks for those who have sacrificed themselves in the name of freedom and peace and also glorifying God and glorifying the wars that they fought in. If we're not careful, our sermons and indeed our whole way of thinking ends up becoming old fashioned, imperialistic, focusing on plucky little Britain going to war against the fuzzy wuzzies. The day becomes about war and not about peace. I wonder whether even in this time of remembrance you've been part of or experienced an argument or conflict. I'm sad to say I have indeed even this morning somebody contacted me saying that there was a big argument in their workplace. Even after keeping silence even after praying about peace, even while we're living in this time of remembrance, we humans have an innate ability to get into arguments or fights. Indeed, there are some of us, I suspect, who could have an argument in an empty room. Many of these arguments, alas, even take place within the church, the one place that they ought not to. When I was at school, one of my RE teachers decided to use a modern translation of the Bible. The wording for St Matthew chapter 5 verse 9 that Shaz read earlier read, blessed are those who want peace. Indeed, at the time and to this day, the translation seemed rather odd. Compared to the translations we're used to, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are those who want peace sounds rather watery. It seems to be a bit lacklustre. A person who wants peace, for example, may well look the other way when they see something wrong happening. After all, they may think, I don't want to be involved. I want peace. I want a peaceful life. A peacemaker, on the other hand, upon noticing some wrongdoing happening, will do their very best to stop it. They won't rest until the situation is resolved. They make peace they make a peaceful world. I've come to realise over the last few weeks that Remembrance Tide, that is the month of November, is a time to recommit ourselves to working for peace. It's a time to consider the effect of war and conflict, both the national wars that we remember over the coming weeks and those localised wars, wars within our own lives, disputes and arguments that affect us in our day-to-day -day living. November, of course, is a perfect time to do this, as we prepare for Christmas, when Christians celebrate the birth of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. That's why I often think a hymn, which is found in the Christmas section of many of our hymn books, is so appropriate. The hymn is, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. And a verse of that reads, For man at war with man hears not the love song which they bring. So hush the noise, ye men of strife, and hear the angels sing. Friends, it is my hope and prayer that we will all allow ourselves to focus on peace this Remembrance Tide. 
and allow it to change us so that we may no longer engage in war, conflict or argument, but fulfill all that the prophet Isaiah pre predicted when he said nations will beat their swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. Because that is what we must do if we are seeking to bring about peace in our troubled world. It is this that you and I are called to. But we know, friends, that we cannot do this in our own strength. And so we do it instead in the strength of the one who calls us. We come before God now in prayer. Let us pray. God of goodness and truth, we offer our broken spirits for your healing, our searching for your guiding light through Christ our Lord. We acknowledge, God of light and love, that you desire that all your people should live in your peace. Grant us the humility to seek your forgiveness and the will to practice it when dealing with others. Help us in the days to come to seek the good of the world around us, to work for the increase of peace and justice, and to show tolerance and open-mindedness to those whose character or customs differ from ours. Grant that our remembrance this day may be consecrated for practical service, that the world may be made better for our children and our children's children. Receive our prayers this morning for the well-being of all your people, especially those who mourn or are sad. For all of those in distress, whether known to us or known only to you. Hear us as we pray for the peace of the world, for the wise resolution of conflicts, for our nation's leaders, Elizabeth our Queen, Boris our Prime Minister, for those going to the polls in the United States of America. And for the release of captives and oppressed people everywhere. Grant that the people of the world may do your will and live in your spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray and who taught us once together to say. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We sing our final hymn this morning. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. Reclothe us in our rightful minds, in purer lives thy service find, in deeper reverence praise.
we sing now the national anthem. And now may God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Queen, the Church and the Commonwealth and all humankind, peace, unity and concord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and those you love, this time and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>